Hello everyone! Welcome back to a very special video. I'm DTM as always, and in this video, I want to discuss something in Fae that isn't really competitive focused, but rather on something that I think is actually really underutilized in Fae. That something, of course, if you read the title, is Plegian Weapons. Plegian Weapons and the effects exemplified by Plegian Weapons are very popular and powerful effects. But I don't necessarily want to focus on the weapon effect itself. Rather, I want to discuss how this effect gained a regional identity in the community, to the point where any other weapon that has this effect is referred to as a Plegian weapon, despite potentially not being on a unit connected to Plegia. I mean, it is telling that we are calling the new Red Vulture Tome a Red Plegian Tome. So why is that? And why do I think this is so cool, this theming is so cool and so underutilized in Fae? Well, before we get into that, uh, I have to do my spiel. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell, all that jazz to help support the channel. This video took so long to make and took so many days to write. And I would just really appreciate you taking 5 seconds to subscribe to help this video grow in the algorithm and all of that. Really, seriously, it would be super appreciated, so please, please, please do subscribe. It costs nothing, and it would be really appreciated if you did. But yeah, before we get into that, let's travel back to back when Plegian Weapons were first released. Plegian Weapons were first introduced in January 2021 on a special hero banner themed around Plegia. This banner was extremely unique, being a special hero banner in place of a previously new hero banner slot of last year. The theme of this banner was something never seen before. It was a banner centered on a region in the Fire Emblem games, specifically Awakening. And every single weapon introduced in that banner, with the exception of Fel Candelabra on Harmonic Dorothea, had basically the same new effect. What this new effect does is that it inflicts a penalty on the respective stats to be a set value plus the current visible penalty on those stats, calculated independently. For example, Plegian Axe effect is, if unit is not adjacent to an ally, inflicts penalty on foe's attack and defense during combat equal to 5 plus any current penalty on each of those stats. This is the same for Plegian Bow, for Plegian Torch, it is for Attack and Res, for Fel Flambeau, it is for all stats. Again, only Fel Candelabra has a different effect. This new effect essentially takes the visible debuffs on your opponent and adds on top of that an in-combat debuff of the same amount for those stats. Similar to how Bonus Doubler takes the visible buffs on yourself and adds on top of that an in-combat buff of the same amount. Thus, this is like a debuff doubler. So you can see that what you want to do with these weapon effects is to debuff your enemy. So in creating a synergistic team, the playstyle revolves around debuffing the enemy, and so things that help with that fit together. This is again something that was completely new. There wasn't a skill like this, like with bonus doubler. And so when talking about this new effect, there wasn't a set term to name this effect, and so given that this new effect debuted on a banner themed around Plegia, on weapons named Plegian Axe, Plegian Bow, etc., and how this was a consistent theme for this Plegian banner, the community called this effect the Plegian Effect. This was really cool! This effectively gave the region of Plegia a signature mechanic, a theme, a style for the region. Forevermore, this effect has been identified as Plegian 1, something that belongs to and is a part of Plegia. And because the community has designated this effect as the Plegian effect, given this mechanic a regional identity, what this also does is to give the region of Plegia an identity in gameplay. This is something I feel is not really present in Fey that I think is missed potential. To give an example, in Legends of Runeterra, a card game based on the League of Legends universe, each card and champion is categorized into a region based on their lore, and each region emphasizes a certain playstyle or theme. For example, 
Noxus, an expansionist empire, is a region focused on aggro and expending resources to deal damage as quickly as possible. Demacia, a defensive kingdom, focuses on units working together to control the battle and cards that buff your allied units and forcing combats on favorable terms. This theming gives each region a unique gameplay identity, at least until Bandle City, <laughs> that is reflective of their story and lore. It integrates story and gameplay together and helps make each region and each hero in each region feel real and actually immersed in the world. This is basically what I feel could and should happen with Plegia with this new Plegian effect. This effect is part of the identity of Plegia and is its signature mechanic. Thus, if we hypothetically want to continue with this theme, ideally units from Plegia would contribute by either enabling debuffs on the foe or potentially having other ways to benefit from debuffs on the foe apart from this Plegian mechanic. A playstyle focusing on debuffing your enemies is a really cool and cohesive theme that also integrates with the story of Plegia. Heck, Bell Candelabra, the one weapon that doesn't have the Plegian effect, is basically an Omnichill giving global debuffs. So in a way, that still fits with this playstyle theme of Plegia and enabling the Plegian effect. But I'm getting ahead of myself because I did say that I feel this is underutilized. I'll talk more about that later, but for now, suffice it to say that, at this point, the community just decided to call this effect the Plegian effect, for a lack of a better term. It's just one banner, after all, and these weapons are the only weapons with this effect, so honestly, who knows if this theme will continue. And that brings us to... Male Morgan's Refine. Male Morgan's preference weapon is called Grima's Truth. Grima being the identity of reverence of Plegia. People who played the Future Past DLC will know exactly why this fix, please play the Future Past DLC. But regardless, in April 2021, Male Morgan received his Weapon Refined, and as part of that Weapon Refined, received the following effect. At the start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, inflicts penalty on foe's attack speed defense res during combat equal to 4 plus any current penalty on each of those stats. Well, what do you know? Male Morgan received the same effect as that of the Plegian weapons. Grima's Truth has the Plegian effect. It just fits. Male Morgan, being the son of Robin, who, spoiler alert, is the vessel of Grima, and having joined Grima in the Future Past DLC, uh, another spoiler alert, him having the Plegian effect works really well thematically. And this was the first new instance of this effect. And given that the previous instance was on the Plegian banner, and now this instance is on Male Morgan who joined Grima with Grima's Truth, the Plegian deity, at this stage the community really perceived this meta-narrative. This effect really does seem like the thematic signature of those connected with Plegia or Grima. This refine builds upon the identity of this effect and the region of Plegia and those connected with it. It's hard to explain, but it really did seem like this thematic connection was a thing, and that those connected with Plegia would have this effect or focused on debuffs and that theme. While obviously you can't exactly change the effects of past units, looking to the future, it seemed that there was this cohesive design choice to have Plegian characters with this Plegian effect. Mail Morgan only solidified the idea that this effect's identity was Plegian, and only reinforced this gameplay identity for Plegian characters. This only got stronger once we get to the Fallen Morgans. So in May of 2021, we had our annual Fallen banner, and with it comes the Fallen Morgans. Both Morgans are based on the Future Past DLC, seriously, go play it before the eShop disappears, <laughs> and are followers of Grima. Their weapons, while not having the Plegian effect, have weapon conditions based on the debuffs of the foe. If the total debuff on the foe is greater than 5, the foe can't make a follow-up attack. If also greater than 10, the unit also makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. If also greater than 15, it also inflicts guard on the foe. And again, while not having the Plegian effect, 
it still fits with that theme of wanting to debuff the enemy, and gaining power when debuffing the enemy. And given that this was released shortly after Male Morgan's refine, this connection was definitely noticed. We have newly introduced units connected to Plegia that has a playstyle involving debuffing the enemy, and while it isn't the Plegian effect, the theme and identity was still there. It was still a cohesive design for the gameplay, and still contributed to that story integration and connection. And for me personally, it really did feel like this was something that IS would stick to, would develop, would focus on more. Because again, having regional themes and gameplay styles help make these regions feel alive and real and have you immersed just through the gameplay. But unfortunately, it appears that IS stopped at the brink of greatness. And we move on to the July 2021 Weapon Refine. So, in July, we had our monthly weapon refines, and the batch of units was interesting. Relevant to our discussion was that both Grimas, who shared the weapon expiration, were slated to get a weapon refine. Gunthra was slated to get a weapon refine as well. So thematically, if we are to continue this regional theme that I've been discussing, you would expect Grima's refine to be related to debuffing the enemy, whether it is the actual pledging effect, or other effects enabled by debuffs, or being the DD of reverence, maybe enabling debuffs to the enemy in a sort of divine blessing sort of way. But no, Expiration's refine just grants plus 4 to all stats and inflicts the guard effect. Yippee. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gunthra's refine actually does grant her the pledging effect. Now gameplay-wise, both refines are pretty good. Expirations is extremely solid and gets the job done. Gunthra, meanwhile, is now very synergistic with Chilling Seal and her base effect, and is now an extremely powerful nuke. However, to me, it is a missed opportunity to build upon the regional theme as described before, giving a unit with no connection to Plegia the Plegian effect while the deity Grima does not and doesn't connect with the gameplay style that was starting to develop. Again, if Grima had something involving wanting to or helping debuff the enemy, I feel that would grow this identity for Plegia and this characteristic. Regardless though, the Plegian effect still hasn't yet have an official name or skill, so people were still calling it the Plegian effect, even though Gunthra now has it. This, of course, led to some amazing memes, but it really does show how this effect has been intrinsically linked to the region of Plegia. The Plegian banner, with its consistent theming of effects, along with there being no prior conception of these effects, really resonated with the community that this effect's identity is Plegian. This would continue into the next time this effect popped up, which is Legendary Lucina's Refine. Fast forward six whole months to January 2022 when we get Legendary Lucina's Refine, which, along with Future Vision 2 debuffing the enemy's attack and defense, Thogan got some more effects. Among them was the Plegian effect. Now, Lucina is not the biggest fan of Grima, so at a surface level, this doesn't really make any sense. However, Lucina is definitely tied to Plegia, or at least is present in that world with Plegia. And so there is still that connection, even if it is in opposition. And in the games, if female Robin marries Krom, which is a fairly popular pairing in the game, Lucina's mother is Robin. And again, Robin is Grima's vessel and was originally from Plegia. So it's not too unreasonable that Lucina would take something from her mother's side thematically. And in this doomed future, you can imagine a scenario where the fight becomes so desperate that Lucina needs to take some power of Plegia to help her cause. Like maybe after a devastating assault on Elistol, which is on the brink, Lucina, who has always known about Robin's power and that Plegian magic, but was always afraid and ashamed of it because, you know, Grima, has a moment where she is out of options and realizes that this power in her shouldn't be something to be ashamed of, but empowered by. She is her mother's daughter too, 
and she is just as connected to Plegia as she is to Elise, and that Plegia is also suffering under Grima's destruction. And so, in this dire state, she awakens this power for the first time, in a heartfelt scene with flashbacks of her time with Robin, and that loving family, and vowing to free the entire world from Grima's wrath. Okay, that was basically an imaginary AU that I just wanted to express, <laughs> that I wanted to share, but regardless, that effect was still tied to Plegia by the community, and thus, the memes ensued. Jokes about Lucina just being in a rebellious phase, or how she's turning to the dark side commenced. And so while Lucina going to the dark side doesn't really fit initially, Lucina is from Awakening and does have that connection to Plegia, whether it is solely in opposition or through Robin, so in a way, it still built up that regional theme and made that effect more tied to Plegia in a roundabout sort of way, and at the very least, it is a better fit than Gunthra. Which leads us to the Vulture Tomes. And now, we get to Ascended Idun's banner in February, where Neem was introduced with a new inheritable colorless tome. This, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this. This tome is a colorless version of Plegian Torch, with the Plegian effect. Given that regular inheritable tomes follow a very strict pattern of the color, then an animal in Old Norse based on that effect, it appears that this new line of regular inheritable tomes will be Vulture Tomes, which have this Plegian effect. Thus, we can expect something like Rar Vulture for a red Plegian Tome. And indeed, we did get one from Salem. Now, neither of these characters have any connections to Plegia. Neem sort of fell under the radar though, as it was an inheritable colorless tome, of which there are like only nine units in the game of that color and weapon type each of which having a preference weapons that they would rather use, so no one really cared. But with Salem and Rar Vulture, an inheritable red tome with that powerful Plegian effect, that is very juicy and powerful for a lot of red mages that people want to build up. Again, I feel like this was a missed opportunity to continue to build off this Plegian theme. Making, this, making these inheritable Vulture tomes and naming it as such is fine, but it would have been so cool to have the initial wielders or introducers of these tomes be from Plegia. It would make the theme cohesive and continue to build on this gameplay identity of Plegia and build that immersion. That said, it is telling that when the community talks about these vulture tomes, they really don't describe their effects as vulture effects. Rather, they describe it as a Plegian effect. Rar Vulture is commonly described as a red Plegian Tome. So he has got Rother Vulture Plus, and this is basically a Plagian Tome. So you have probably seen Plagian Torch and how it functions. We have seen uh, Plagian Weapon Refines on a couple of units as well, like Neil Morgan, for example. The Vulture Tomes are essentially Plagian Weapons with the Plagian Torch Plus, basically being the green variant. Plagian Weapons can be quite powerful by doubling down on debuffs already on the target. So he has Rower Vulture Plus, which is pretty dope, actually. So this is the Plegian Tome effect that we saw from Neem on the other banner. Despite getting a name similar to Raven Tomes, and how getting Weapon Triangle Advantage over Colorless Unit is called the Raven Tome effects, the community still refers to this effect primarily as a Plegian one, at least at the time of recording. Despite missed opportunities by IS, the effect's identity is still intrinsically tied to Plegia, and Plegia, in turn, is thematically tied to this effect and the gameplay style it represents. The regional gameplay identity is still there, and it still feels alive. Now, it can be easy to chalk this up as due to this effect being initially introduced on Plegian weapons, with no prior name or skill with it, and thus, because it was first, that name stuck. And sure, the fact that it was first did play a role in maintaining this effect's regional identity. However, I also think it is because having this effect be a signature theme for Plegia is a lot more memorable, a lot more immersive, and a lot more narratively integrated. We like stories, and gameplay mechanics that build on that story make it feel real and alive. If IS didn't introduce this effect on the Plegian banner, and didn't build upon that, say, just introduce these as Vulture Tomes on GHBs or something, 
it would just be treated as simply another weapon effect, and not anything special outside of the gameplay, like with Raven Tomes. However, because IS introduced this effect on the Plegian banner, giving it an immediate connection, and had that effect consistently present on that banner, and because IS built upon that with Male Morgan's Refine, and later-ish with the Fallen Morgans, it stuck. It gained a narrative, a theme, an identity, and Plegia in turn gained an identity in gameplay, integrating story with gameplay. Plegia gained a theme around this effect, of which it's become its signature, and from then on, the link between this effect and Plegia cannot be undone, even if IS doesn't hold to that theme like they did. If this was just a simple quote-unquote vulture effect, we wouldn't make memes about Gunthra adopting Morgan as a brother, or trying to fit in with Plegians. We wouldn't make memes about Lucina submitting to Grima, or make jokes about ditching Naga. This weapon effect has gained a story of its own, its own regional identity. And despite IS's missed opportunities to continue building upon that, I think this is still a really cool thing. I mentioned before how, in Legends of Runeterra, every card and champion comes from a region, and each region has a certain playstyle based on their lore. I think this is something that can really be brought to Fey. Obviously, you can't change past units, but Plegian weapons show that it is not too late to introduce this sort of theming and giving each region a gameplay identity. We already have something like this, sort of, for individual characters, like Makaya with Sacrifice, Krom with To Change Fate, Lucina with Future Vision, Edelgard with Raging Storm effects, etc. Making regions cohesive and thematic in gameplay would increase the immersion and gameplay story integration of Fey. Now, I know why IS probably doesn't hold this for entire regions. It can feel limiting design-wise and potentially reduce the uniqueness of characters, but it doesn't have to be that way. Legends of Runeterra have Every individual champion feel unique, despite this regional theming. Themes are not specific. As I mentioned before, with the Plegian effect as its signature mechanic, the region of Plegia can be themed around debuffing the enemy. There's a lot of unique effects under that theme, and if a unit from Plegia doesn't fit that theme, then it could tell something about that character. Maybe they are rebelling and thus have a different effect or maybe they are an outcast, or don't fit in. This is the potential of this gameplay story integration, of giving regions an identity in gameplay. There is a reason, reason why Plegian effects are still referred to as such as of recording this video, even as units not connected to Plegia gained it. Narratives and themes stick with you, even if they're dropped in the future, that identity persists in the minds of the community. I really do hope that IS actually builds on this, as there is a lot of potential, and I hope this also expands to other regions as well. This is such an underutilized design choice. While I can't say for certain that we will continue to call this effect a pledging effect and not a vulture effect as time goes on, especially if IS doesn't continue building off of this regional theme, but what I do know is that giving a region, an identity in gameplay goes a long way to making these characters and the world they are from alive and with us. It helps to immerse us. It gives these gameplay mechanics and effects a story, a theme, a regional identity. So yeah, thank you for coming to my Fey TED Talk. Again, I really wanted to discuss this and hopefully you all enjoyed it. Again, if you did, Please, please, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that jazz to help support this video. Again, I this took so many days and took a lot of work to make and present and write to you all. So at the very least, I would appreciate you taking five seconds of your time to like and subscribe. It really does mean a lot and I really do appreciate it. And yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what other cool themes you would like to see in Fae. And yeah, again, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully, IS does something with these pledging effects that is cohesive. And yeah, see you all next time. Thank you, everyone.